Day 5. Selfish or selfless? Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants. Nehemiah 1.6 We regard God as an airman regards his parachute. It's there for emergencies, but he hopes he'll never have to use it. C.S. Lewis a bank is a place that will lend you money if you can prove that you don't need it. Bob Hope. Nehemiah then does something truly extraordinary. Actually, he does something so radical that this is where we usually have a disconnect with Nehemiah and start to ask, who does this guy think he is? Or worse, as one out of the 12 commentaries studied in regard to the life and times of Nehemiah, he has got to be a fake. Nehemiah begged God to listen to his prayer to save his people and to bring them back together to the place God had chosen as the place for him and his people to live. It was not a prayer of save me, God, and I'm sure you will take care of the others, but my needs are most important. But the paradigm changing plea to ask God to intervene on someone else's behalf. This prayer changed Nehemiah forever. This communication with the God of the universe brought him from material comfort to great gain, and he chose to invest his life into the lives of others. He had no idea what such a prayer would bring or what he would do about it, but he knew he was going to do everything in his power to right a great wrong. He was one man with only a prayer to save an entire people and their city. One day, he was enjoying the markings of success the next day, he had a complete and radical heart and life change. It reminds me of the movie Jerry Maguire, in which the main character is a high-powered sports agent and attorney who has single-handedly driven up the prices of the talent he represents by hard negotiating tactics that leaves families, friends, and the health of his clients way behind. He's rich, successful in the world's eyes, and his life is enviable. Until that one night, the night when he visited a pro hockey player client who was just regaining consciousness in the hospital after yet another concussion. In a partial catatonic state, the player couldn't remember where he was or who the people in the room were, but recognized his agent, Jerry Maguire. This is my agent, and I have to get the bonus. I gotta get the bonus for playing all my games. The player's son, who was 13 years old, walked Jerry out of the hospital room and pleaded with him, saying his dad had three concussions that season and he could not hold out much longer. Only to hear Jerry Maguire say, Nothing can stop your dad. The boy was utterly dejected as he feared for his dad's life. Later that evening, Jerry Maguire had a nightmare and woke with a new conscience and wrote a new mission statement, one that put people ahead of profits. He distributed to everyone in the company and he was promptly fired as a result. That would be the typical good guys finish last, defeatist scenario. In Hollywood style, however, there is a girl who believes in him, and against all odds, the two of them rise back to the top by putting people before profits. We know just how to pray during times of misfortune for ourselves. But when it is not directly affecting us and ours, we thank God that we are still intact and healthy and blessed. But when we beg God on behalf of others, we are tapping into the heart of God. The problem is, however, that it seems that we just don't get the answers to our prayers in the financial realm. The reason? Because we so often ask with the wrong motives. Nehemiah's motives were pure, as he knew he was interceding for people that were hurting, and he wanted to help. The disciple James said, you do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. After eight days in this prison style jail and unable to raise the million dollar bail, miraculously it was reduced and I was able to get out via a bail bondsman. When they announced my release, it was no great thrill or relief. Days earlier, I had prayed every moment to be released. And then I invited this God, whom I called my Savior, into a friendship. 
My heart was already released. I took the next hour going cell to cell, telling the inmates about my newfound freedom and something deeper than jailhouse religion. It was a freedom with a deep heart satisfying, stress calming, anxiety freeing, peace giving that had eluded me until then. My new wise advice to the fellow prisoners and those whom Jesus Christ loved deeply was, don't lose hope. This could be the most peaceful time of your life. And yours too.